fire and war. Oh, oh, come near afar, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, lay down your weapons, it is not too late for my mercy. Oh, oh, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, 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 I'm a god, how can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Narabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. Oh, I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Narabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. The moon and star come to me through fire and war. Oh, oh, come near afar. Come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, lay down your weapons. It is not too late for my mercy. Oh, oh, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, 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 I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Narabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. Well, the moon and star come to me through fire and war. Oh, oh. Come near afar, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, lay down your weapons, it is not too late for my mercy. Oh, oh, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, 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 I'm a god, how can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god, how can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Narabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. 
how can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Zarabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. The moon and star come to me through fire and war. Oh, oh, come near a bar. Come and look upon the heart. Look upon the heart. Oh, lay down your weapon. It is not too late for my mercy. Oh, oh, come and look upon the heart. Look upon the heart. Oh, 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 I'm a god. How can you kill a god? a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Zarabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. Welcome, moon and star. Come to me through fire and war. Oh, oh. Come near a bar, come and look upon the heart, look upon the heart. Oh, lay down your weapons, it is not too late for my mercy. Oh, oh, come and look upon the heart, look upon the heart. Oh, 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 I'm a god, how can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god, how can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Zarabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. Call or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. Oh, I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Zarabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god, god, I'm a god. I'm a god, I'm a god.
the moon and star, come to me through fire and war. Oh, oh, come there afar, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, lay down your weapon, it is not too late for my mercy. Oh, oh, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, 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 I'm a god, how can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Zerabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. Well, the moon and star come to me through fire and war. Oh, oh. Come near afar, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, lay down your weapons, it is not too late for my mercy. Oh, oh, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, 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 I'm a god, how can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god, how can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Zerabar. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. God. I'm a god. I'm a god. I'm a god. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. No recall or intervention can work in this place. There is no escape. Oh, I'm a god. How can you kill a god? What a grand and intoxicating innocence. I'm a god. How can you kill a god? Shame on you, sweet Zerabar. I'm a god. I'm a god, I'm a god, god, I'm a god, I'm a god, I'm a god. The moon and star come to me through fire and war. Oh, oh, come near afar, come and look upon the heart, upon the heart. Oh, lay down your weapons, it is not too late for my mercy. Oh, oh, come and look upon the heart. Hello, hello. Welcome, once again. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, today, I actually have, as you can see on the screen, I went ahead and ahead of time. <clears throat> made like an outline of just things. Um, of course, the, the stream goals, you know, and love. Uh, kind of just single bullet point here of what we did yesterday. Um, basically spent the whole time figuring out how to make those links work again with archive.org testing them and all that um so i don't really know what i'm doing here if that wasn't already evident uh and uh i didn't know about the vod thing 
<laughs> so I check that, and I think I'll go ahead and check that. And so now the stream should be available afterwards. And I'm not sure how it works. If I have to like push it to YouTube after that, I don't know. But uh, uh, we can do that if we need to. And then yeah, we're playing around with the, uh, the DLAD CLI, which was uh, which is really cool. Probably use that today. Um, continuing issue cleanup. There's the the Ramirez graveyard mods, BSA usage notes, uh, glass OTEC, graphic realism compatibility, just a few, um, you know, low hanging fruits basically. Object paging tweaks that I talked about with Gonzo before. I actually forgot to I brought it up yesterday. Forgot to mention. Um, we're on the topic. I'll just go into detail now. So yeah, I've got an AMD graphics graphics card, 5700 XT. Um, and I really, I didn't see any gain, and actually, like, in Sega Neen, depending on which way I looked, there actually was a, a performance drop, which was under OpenMW 0.48, as it says there, which seems weird. I didn't try 49, um, I didn't try it on my Steam Deck, which I think is another worthy, um, endeavor. Oh, okay. A little bit is popping, thank you. Uh-oh. Oh boy. All right. Thank you. Uh, oh. How about I just made one tweak. Is this better? Yeah. Yeah. And I think okay. How about this now? Uh, testing, testing, one, two, three, here we go. <laughs> Aha, okay. <sighs> Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely, if I sound like poopy, let me know. Um, got, like, multiple mics in the mix here. Yeah, thank you, Smallio. That's my wife, by the way, everybody. Um, she's in, the, like, 15 feet away from me and kindly giving me a view. Um, so yeah, anyway, going back to the going back to the list and I can re discuss anything if anybody needs to. Um and again, you know, got a question, please just ask in the in the chat. Um I would say this tweak is worth trying and I would probably add it to the tweaks page on the website at some point with a caveat, but honestly like really before we start making any performance claims, what we really need is a Lua perf testing mod because what happens is um, there's what's called a random seed in the OpenMW engine, and this decides all kinds of things, um, including like, you know, your NPCs that are going to spawn, um, you know, what their leveled list loadouts are and where they're going to walk or whatever, um, just everything. Um, and OpenMW lets you set that. So as I say here, you know, we would, we would set a hard coded seed, um, and we would actually also want to, um, pre-program all the movement. So everything is the same every time, 100%. Because right now, uh, you know, all of the testing methods that I have are, like, they're good and they can give you a baseline, but it's highly unscientific, um, you know, without without having all of this, like, predefined and the same every single time. So, uh, you know, it's one of those things I really, really would love to do. I'm going to go ahead and check off GLab CLI. Um, but, yeah, if you're following along at home and you, like me, like your command line, um, yeah, yeah, the... Uh, the lighthouse test. Yeah, basically. I mean, I had uh, toggle clipping on, but um, I just kind of like propel myself upwards and look towards, um, you know, Vivek's temple. But uh, yeah, yeah. As I was saying, if you're following along, home, along at home and you like the command line stuff like me, they got a cool ASCII enema video somewhere in their docs. Uh, you can at least watch how it works. We'll check this as we go along. Um, so yeah, I mean, this is great. It's always good to... Uh, yeah, yeah, there's the tweaks. Uh, you know, that's another thing, too. Um, and I'll just pull it up on here so we can see what I'm talking about here. You know, I've got, like, these... Not so much resources, but, yeah, tips, setup steps, even guides, I don't know. Some of these names of these buttons and the pages, I'm just not sure if they're good, if they properly communicate what the content is on here. Because, um, yeah, you know, to find the performance tweaks portion you have to go to tips and then you have to like endure the wall of buttons um and i made it the first button at least but yeah i mean boom this is it right here all these steps this is basically what i do right and it makes you know like when you're installing a bunch of mods <clears throat> it makes testing like just a, a snap you know you're 
change your config or do whatever you need to do, run the game, and boom, you're wherever you need to go. Um, I've taken it a step further, and I've made like a little launch wrapper, and that's actually this note right here. I'm kind of jumping the gun here, but that's this, which is the portable install feature of OpenMW, a little-known thing um, done by the team for 0.48. Uh, but I won't jump too far ahead. So yeah, object paging tweaks, excellent. Always good to kind of jump into those. Um, and I try to put some on that perf testing page. But, uh, you know, it's like everybody's setup is different. Are you on AMD or NVIDIA or Intel? Are you Windows? Are you Mac? Are you Linux? Are you this? Are you that? Are you Haiku OS? Um, what's your OpenMW version? What's your OSG version, etc.? cetera? Um, so there's just so many things. Um, and yeah, even if you have an AMD GPU, for example, there's the... Um, what is it here? There's some specific, yeah, this thing, Verte this thing seemed to like help me on my AMD graphics card, you know? So there's just stuff like this. Are you using that? Are you not using that? Are you VAOs? Are you VBOs? All kinds of like knobs that can really like help you out or shoot yourself in the foot with. Um, and yeah, I wanted to look at audiobooks of Morrowind. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be first. Um, I disabled my compositor on my desktop, so hopefully running OpenMW is less of a potato experience. Um, maybe we'll just do that first for funsies, um, and we can see. <clears throat> there was somebody on Discord who mentioned how to install OMW FX shaders, which, uh, in looking at my page for it, it's pretty, you know, it pretty much assumes you know everything already, which is a common mistake I make, so do definitely want to look at that. Somebody also asked about... Um, does the LDM mod make a specific dialogue change, which... I honestly don't know. We can try to take a quick look though. Um, I'm thinking I would use Delta plugin to dump it to a text file and sort of like poke around at that. Rather than firing it up in the CS, you know, um, there is a new mod from Rosenant that they actually emailed me personally about. Um, I don't have the link for that handy actually. I'll have to grab that from my email. Um, there was an action camera swap bug report. So this is jumping into Lua land kind of. Um, and there are a few issues on NCGD Lua Edition in the backlog. <clears throat> if we have time, we can look at those. I also had kind of a thought for my Lua mods, um, you know, such as, for example, we'll put up good old natural character growth and decay here. You know, I, I made these um, kind of websites here, just very simple, that have, like, instructions. But I kind of wonder, like, I don't know, to put it bluntly, do these instructions stink? Are they any good? Um you should be able to read these and kind of know that's what I got to do. And I'm thinking mm, maybe it, that's not the case. Just based on some feedback I've seen from uh, uh, people on Discord, you know, and the questions that they ask. So, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's the next thing. I'm getting distracted by tab maintenance. Maybe we'll get there. Maybe we'll not. Um, what I had wondered is Starwind compatible with, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Solvus Combat Pack or some of it. Um, certainly I think it would work if you run it with OpenMW 0.48, it'll work. The question is, do the changes kind of fit with the mechanics and gameplay? I don't know. Don't know about that. Um, I talked about this yesterday a little bit, but there was a bug report on Discord. Maybe if we have time and if we can get the game running ac acceptably enough, uh, we can try to reproduce that and fix it. I have a feeling there might be a bug with what I do with level one because it's uh, one of those fun special cases. And then finally, um, I put Steam Deck here because I use this most heavily on my Steam Deck, but I actually use it on all my machines, um, and that's a portable install. So by default, when you run OpenMW, it's going to put config files in your user documents folder, or if you're on Linux, .config, or something like that, and it will read from like a specific place. But if you do the portable run, then it's going to take files from basically wherever you want them to be taken from. And this lets you kind of partition off your installs in, in a, uh, a way that could be useful to you. Um, the launcher definitely lets you have different plugin loadouts and stuff. And you could, in theory, just use the launcher to do the same thing. And it should work for that, I think. Um, I don't know. I don't use the launcher much, though. Um, and, I, and I find these portable installs useful because I can, for example, have on my Steam Deck. If you've never used the Steam Deck, it has like a console kind of a user interface and you can have games in the menu and whatever and and I can have a, spe a specific menu entry for each mod list for Starwind for whatever you know and it's pretty handy right I don't have to like tweak my OpenMW launcher um, and and I find that I see a lot of questions in the Starwind discord you know and I feel like people don't know about 
portable install and it would be good for something like Starwind. So maybe we'll get into that. And then I also had a shower thought of, you know, these notes probably should be public. Um, and uh, so at some point I will do that. I'll create a repo um, in the, you know, in the modding OpenMW org on GitLab. Um, so yeah, that's the kind of the plan. You know, we'll see what we get to. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, without further ado, let's take a look at this one, which Gonzo very helpfully pointed me to um, the other day. And uh, definitely sounds interesting. So I got my downloads folder here, my mods folder here. I would, I don't know. I guess this is a, I guess this is an audio mod, but like I said yesterday, category naming is just, it's hard. Audio books of Morrowind. Take those evil spaces out of there. Hmm. All right. Cool. Got a Discord to help work on the project. Cool, cool. Not going to hop in there right now. 11 labs. Neat. I don't know what that is. But I'm going to look into it. How to use. Interact with a book in the overworld and a choice will appear. Read out loud and read silently. Hmm. Does not appear when you open a book from your inventory. Huh. Okay, so I guess you got to like... Gonzo, if you've used this... Let me know. You got to like plop it on the ground then or okay. I could re keep reading. I think uh, I'll turn it off. Okay. Yeah. So I guess plop it on the ground. Well, 163 books. That's pretty impressive. And that's presumably not all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I actually don't know how many books are in Morrowind. You put it on the ground. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying Gonzo. Oh, I see. So, okay. Neat. Very neat. Cool, cool. It works better and faster with open... Oh, well, how fortunate. Let's download. Hmm. I guess we just need this file. probably a pretty big file four hundred and ten megabytes yeah Sounds about right. Uh, and that's, of course, even compressed. Very good. Yeah, let's go ahead and get to my... Let's open the W. Uh, I'm going to my minimal. The mod list I like to just chuck things into when I'm what I'm testing out but it has some oh, has some nice you know just stuff rigged up to make my potato happier Let's go to my... Mm -hmm. Looks good. All right, let's run the game and hope for the best. Ah, thank you. Over 300 books. Wowee. <laughs> Just wow. And if you take a moment and consider the development team size of Morrowind, I, again, don't, you know, I can't quote you an exact number there, but maybe you can go look that up and it will shock you. It's a small number so a very small number of motivated individuals <laughs> you know and it just did amazing things that we enjoy today all right i don't know if you're gonna get my i don't know if you're gonna get my game audio here let's see yeah hmm 
I guess I should have tested this in advance. Huh. Mm -hmm. I suppose I don't need to have fire jail in the mix there. Yeah, agreed about the writing quality. Just considering the constraints they were under, you know, it makes it, I think, more impressive, you know. Eh, okay, well, this is a bit of a bummer. My, my sound is just not happening for OpenMW during the string, unfortunately. Or maybe it is? No? Well, that's a bit of a bummer. Hmm. Okay. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna have to probably shelve this idea for now until I can, <laughs> at some point in the future, figure out how to make my audio work for the game. Um, let me just look at my thing for just another moment here. Yeah, there's nothing. Hmm. That's a bummer. Oh, I see. Hmm. Weird. Okay. I have an idea. Linux users know what I'm talking about. Ooh. Okay. That was noise. Can I share it with you folks? Ooh, there you go. You should hear my Morrowind now, right? I think so. It's probably too loud. Yeah, nice. All right. Cool. Um, here's hoping we just got a book somewhere in here. We can, uh, oh man, it's dark. Yeah, cool. Okay. It's on the ground. I hope this counts. If you would be wise, model your lives on the lives of the saints. If you would learn valor, follow Saint Nerevar the captain, patron of warriors and statesmen. Wow. Lord Nerevar helped to unite the barbarian Dunma tribes into a great nation. What can I say? Culminating in his martyrdom when leading the Dunma to victory against the evil Dwemer. That's pretty good. How do I stop this thing again now? Of Red Mountain. Oh my goodness. If you would learn daring, follow Saint Veloth the Pilgrim, patron of outcasts and spirituals. Pretty cool. Saint Venoth, prophet and mystic, led the Dunma out of the decadent home country of... Neat. Yeah, I'll say, uh, very impressive text-to-speech. I mean, I'm a, you know... Yeah, pron correct pronunciation. Yeah, wow. Okay, so definitely... Let's add this to the website right now. Um, I'm impressed. I'm not somebody who's gonna, like, easily say I love this, you know, but this is, it's hard to say that I don't love this. In fact, I'm saying I do love it. So, yeah, okay, well, let's do that then. Let's go to, so I guess this is a, this is an audio mod, really. Um, so let's open up our audio data file here back in the website. I uh, took the liberty, by the way, of um, making a new branch here. We got, um, 5.3 part 3 the beginning I just threw in there because <laughs> for fun um, we're on the docker test just to get a cache going there I can close my zip file and yeah let's put this on the website this is just neat and you know of course easy to set up um, and you know I'm going to have to guess about the, the plug in load order but I think it would probably go you know pretty late trying to think quickly about what it could conflict with, but knowing nothing about how it's implemented, that's kind of hard. And we're not going to dive that deep right now, I think. Um, curious where you put it, Gonzo, though. Um, if you've got it in your loadout. Let's put this right here. All right. Twenty eight 
2018. Oh my. What a long time ago. Gotcha. Roger that. Yeah. Well, I think uh, we're due for an MLOX run anyways. Does conflict. Yeah. With book typos for sure. Yeah. So that's just something we'll probably have to do, you know, to live with. Um, interested to see how, if anything, Delta plugin or any other merge tool, you know, um, works with that or doesn't. Cool. Okay. I'm um, just going to put my period here for now. Don't need that. I don't think any usage notes are really needed for this one. It's pretty, you know, run the mod kind of an affair, it seems like. Which is always great. Um, oh, yeah. We need the frog stat. Thank you kindly, frog stat. That's <laughs> really something. Let's get our... Nexus user helper up in here. Just another thing I wrote to kind of ease the burden of having the same kind of link all over the place. Of course, it's not going to tell me in the gutter what is what. Uh, user ID, username, okay. Frog step. Put that user ID down. Lovely. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Well, we are missing, of course, text in the description. So it's really... Sometimes it's difficult to decide what to put in there, you know. Um, this is very succinct, but it's not, you know, wrong. I think this is the right thing to put there. All right, so now the tests will blow up if I don't. Data, data path order, good, good. Okay, so this is where we get, have to make some decisions. I'm gonna just kind of zoom to the bottom here. Enter sounds, okay, I feel like definitely after the book typos because we want this, probably want this conflict to win. Um. You know, it'd be interesting to see what MLock says, honestly, but maybe we'll get, maybe we will get there today before I push the site um, update to the live site. For now, we'll just mess with the beta site and check it out there. But it's going to, it's going to go right here after Better Sounds and Friends, I think. <clears throat> and we'll go from there. We can see, we can do a Delta plugin merge. See what, if anything, pops up. We now need to. Sounds. Okay. And this, of course, is the uh, YAML quiver with fear data file, excuse me, um, for plugin order. And this is how we say the plugin order of the website. So there is, um, should be pretty apparent here. You got a name of a mod in the name of the plugin file, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, in the database, there is a relationship between you know the mod you see on the page and this record here, and that's how we get that, and that's how the CFG generator works, and that's how I can have a somewhat sane way to do uh, different data path orders and different plugin orders. Yeah, okay, well, <laughs> that's how you get started, Gonzo. Uh, don't know anything about modding, but you kind of want to make a compatibility patch. That's how it goes. Um, I basically started, you know, doing things by looking at a, a mod. I like the abandoned flat player home and, you know, just looking at that in, in OpenMWCS just to see OpenMWCS, but also to, to, to see the mod and make changes to it, right? Fixes or whatever, you know, I've made a couple edits to that one for personal use. Um, but that's how it starts. That's how you get the bite. Um, but yeah, definitely let me know if you do it or if you want help doing it. You know, um, if you're working on it, feel free to reach out on the Discord channel and uh, myself. Or there's quite a few knowledgeable people that hang out there. I'm pretty fortunate. So, all right, what is the what is that plugin name? I'm gonna go ahead and do this again. 
I'm quoting every string because I'm just paranoid after reading the YAML document from hell. Which, if you haven't read it, look it up. And if you don't know what YAML is, never mind. It's fine. <laughs> um, all right. Oh, and just text editing. Yeah, okay. Text comparison, rollback, everything except the... Yeah, I mean, so what I would do in that case is I would take Delta plugin, dump it out, um, or uh, Greatness 7's TES3 comp, which I definitely want to cover on this stream sometime. But yeah, dump it to text, make your edits, convert it back to an ESP. You know, um, that's how I would do it. I don't really like messing with the editor for text-only changes, you know. That's just me. Okay. One of the things one of these days I want to do is, like, make some thing that just, like, you know, g give me, like, a even, like, a GUI. I was thinking of, like, some kind of a uh, even Quiver with Fear Electron app or something that would, like, okay, you want to add a mod? These are the things, and this is what you got to do, you know, blah, 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 and kind of help lower the cognitive burden of thinking about all the things I got to do to add things on the website. So anyway, that's what I'm about to do now. Look at these. Um, Delta plugin, so can dump it to YAML, and it also dumps all embedded in mod, um, all MW script scripts um, that are associated with the plugin get dumped to text too. Um, so Bitcom's actually like a really nice way to edit MW script if you want to edit that in an external editor. You know, OpenMWCS is pretty good about that, like almost as good as it needs to be. Um, you know, I still like to edit it in Emacs though, because again, I just like to avoid the editor if I'm not doing like scene changes. Alrighty then. Um, so we need to decide what mod lists this goes into. And I'm absolutely open to feedback, but I'm thinking expanded vanilla, total overhaul, graphics overhaul. This counts, I think, for that. Let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to take the liberty of doing the obvious. I think it belongs here. Um, hmm. Sound? Do I have a sound? Yeah, okay, I do. All right. So this is this is when I was just talking about like a mod editing, content editing helper for the website. This is what I was just talking about because you can, if you don't know what you're doing, my tests will slap you down when you're trying to make a an edit. For example, if you say in the data path load order over here, this pretty much says that the mod has to come before same low price fix. So if I if I mess around and like, you know, put it below, for example, let's just do that. And as I said, the test will slap you down. I'm going to stick to Docker tests too so I can use the black formatting checks uh, in a sane way. I've just kind of admitted defeat on that. You win, Python. You win. Okay, well, that's going to crunch for a minute. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is some way. If you are an unsuspecting contributor who, you know, bless your soul, wants to help and contribute it to the website, and you've been brave enough to get this far... To, to put this right here, um, if you if you don't run the test locally, you'll push it to GitLab CI, and that will blow up with some horrible, you know, error. Um, and, and you'll probably be a little clueless. Maybe it'll give a hint. I don't know. I can't really recall what I made it do when this blows up. But uh, maybe it'll give you a hint. Maybe it won't. It's certainly going to be some hideous error, though. Um, and so, you know, this is one of those things I really want to smooth out. So, um yeah, so let's go ahead and over here, expanded vanilla. We'll do the same thing here, but I won't save the bu uh, the buffer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in order to appease the unit test gods, we got to put it there. All right, here we go. Yeah, so any moment now. Yeah, see, this is this is pretty. I want this to work, um, and again, this is the thing that checks how many spaces are in my code and all that other stuff that I think is really boring to think about. You know, the trade-off being Docker is kind of an overhead. May create um, a burden that makes the test take a little longer, but hey, I think it's a, I think it's a trade-off. Have a consistent environment everywhere. All right, well, I thought that was almost done, but fine. Uh, let's see here. 
It's already done the mod list, so I'm not going to hurt anything. Good, good, good. Okay, now. Now, now, now. We do the change logs. Entry. All right. And change log is something, yeah, I just desperately would love to automate someday, but I haven't really thought of like a really great way, but some kind of general helper thing that kind of gave you everything you needed, uh, you know, I think would really, you know, I think it would really help a lot. So, all right, well, I think actually we don't need a format string here at all. We just need the name of the mod uh, with a link. And again, going back to my, I just have a, I like to do things like this. I got a little function here that will just return the link because as of right now, I don't, one thing I could do in here, which may cause trouble, even more trouble for the lengthy process we have that we're always waiting on. Yeah, test fail. Right here, out of order, total, it's out of order. So it does give you kind of a hint. But it's just like a oh no moment here, you know, and this, <laughs> there's two out of order. So so if this were, uh, like I've done this and had like 200 things out of order because something really early on, you know, and it just, even I'm like, oh, oh no, you know, what did I break? So anyway, yeah, just thinking about ways to make the website more maintainable and less awful for some unsuspecting poor soul who wants to help out to do so. Okay, going back here now, um, today's date, what we got here? Sorry about cracking my lips there. Good, good, all right. I think this might be it. Mm, I'm gonna go ahead and kill that change. Okay, okay. Okay, it's probably easy to look at the diff when I'm crunching the commit. But anyway, let's um. Hmm. I still want to view the website locally and not in Docker because reasons. Okay, well, while that's crunching, uh, nope. Let's look back at our show notes here. So, all right, I'm gonna check this off because it's more or less you know, solved. <laughs> we put it on there. It's going on the website. Um, and it's pretty cool, honestly. I've kind of learned to appreciate kind of just playing a game and leaning back and just, you know, enjoying the audio, really. You know, I'm a, I'm, I have Cranky Kong as my channel icon for a reason. You know, I like old stuff and I don't like the whippersnappers or whatever. But hey, you know, something to be said about that. And as was noted, you know, that text-to-speech was pretty good, <sighs> not gonna lie. I need to start running this in Emacs actually so I can see it, all right, cool. So let's, I should just do this. There we go. All right, so usually when I'm adding them out, I start by doing this, looking at the change log, there should be da -da, something right there, looks good. Yeah, well, you know, to to <laughs> to digress a little bit about um, that, you know, I'm just, I grew up in like the Super Nintendo PS1 era, and I just, I don't know, I got a Steam Deck and I play emulators on it mostly. I'm not really trying to oh, appreciate anything good and new that comes out, but it's not really, you know, Morrowind is like the bee's knees, man, and, and so forth. So anyway, audiobooks of Morrowind, this is, and this is generally the pattern, you know, I'll load it up in here and just kind of, okay, looks pretty good um, all the mods actually have like the same base HTML so I don't need to really mess with that we got our mod listings we got our link there which looks good but let's open it up for posterity looks great download page that's the one I, I think that's it uh, so let's let the tests do their thing And that, yeah, that's it, folks. I think that's a wrap, folks. Let's go ahead and we got everything here. Um, before moving on to the next item, though, I'm debating actually doing M-Locks. I haven't done it in a minute, so I kind of forget what my flow is for that. Um, 
I'll probably do that in the next stream when I'm a little better prepared. But for now, I should have ran the tests once again in Emacs for better visibility. No problemo. For now, though, this is going to be a e pretty easy one. I basically typed out what needs to be said in Discord. And just indicating, you know, get the, like, for posterity on the OMWFX shaders page. It'll take you to the GitLab page. Um, you know, GitLab is what GitLab is. And, and if you're not a... You know, if you're not a programmer, it's not great. Probably. And I wouldn't fault anybody for thinking that way. I am a programmer and I don't like the GitLab UI. Um, but again, you know, big props to GitLab. The entity and the software, you know, and they have, again, they've given the OpenMW project a free, very expensive ultimate license, you know, as an open source entity. So again, just praise for GitLab itself. The UI is not my favorite, if I'm being honest. Um, and so... Uh, here. That'd be an alternative for people. FX shaders. Just to have like everything right here in text and they don't have to go to this page. Which, you know, yeah. Love Vitastic. Love Cody Glassman. Waza Bear. Love you guys. But yeah, like this is kind of, if you don't know what GitLab is, do you know to come here and click that or that or that or whatever you want, you know, do you know that? Um, so I have this link right here, but it's really not obvious. I'm thinking a bullet point list of things to kind of, that's it, you know, so we'll do that next. Should be easy. Should be very easy. Boom. Test pass. Excellent. So let's go ahead and commit that. Um, let's go ahead and commit that. Yeah. Added. Uh, again, that name. Audio Books of Morrowind. Thank you again to Gonzo for pointing me that one. Oh yeah, big props, uh, Dean Edry, twenty-three. Big props, Vitastek and Wasbear. Just and and just, they're just all around great people too. From my interactions, you know, um, good people to have in the community, and they love the game, as we all do. Most respect to them. Cool. All right. Well, let's go ahead and let's get a branch going. Yeah. All right. And uh, let's do this. Get uh, G Lab G Lab uh, CI list. Oh, I know. Right. The volumetric fog is just like oh. Um, there's some technical issues um, just on the OpenMW level that make it, you know, like kind of not not ready to fully replace the sky as is completely. Um, the like the al there's an alpha problem with particles. Um, there's no moon. I don't. Last I checked, there was no moon, which is just tra tragic. I think. All right. Well, I was gonna try to just use my cool command line here, but. I don't even know if a CI job kicked off. Or maybe it doesn't. I'm trying to remember now what I do for CI. Let's see. Yeah, huh. Oh, okay, yeah. This right here, folks. Don't run a CI job. On just a push, any push, you know, do it for merge requests. Before I was graciously given the open source uh, package by the GitLab people, I came very close to running out of CI minutes. And so this was kind of a let's not like spam them with my 20 minute browser job all the time. Um, and I think that's a reasonable, I don't need to, you know, run it. I run it here on my laptop. Don't need to waste GitLab CI's uh, compute power that much. Um, okay, so yeah, no CI job. And that is what we that is what we want. Cool. All right. Well, let's check what we got here. Uh, so let's see here. Let's go to audio. Post processing shaders. Okay. So yeah, the tra uh, yet another just musing out loud here. Another kind of tragic thing about some of the choices I've made making the website is I have here. So this stuff all goes into the database. And so I've got just like a blob of HTML going out into the database. Um, 
you know, it might make somebody who knows about how to do these things the correct way cringe. And, uh, well, what can I say? I did that. So, uh, well, hmm. I don't want just another paragraph here. I want a unordered list. And because it's just embedded here, text, you know, as a Python, as a string, I don't get autocomplete and stuff, which is a little annoying. Oh, well. We made it this far. Okay. Click that link. Which, when you do that, you end up with a zip file named OMWFX Shaders Main. Just gives you the context content of uh, whatever is in the main branch. You get this folder, and that's you know that's really it. Um, so okay, let's type that out. It's driving me wild, and I get things like that happening because it doesn't know it's HTML and won't give me my HTML formatting rules. <clears throat> okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. a data path for it see below for a reference and by that I mean and let me know if you think this is a good idea I mean this would be the ref so if I'm like some unsuspecting Linux user I'd say oh okay I'll just put it in that folder great is my is my intention for that um, extract it and, 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 and then I guess the final step which I mentioned to the user on discord Get in game, hit F2, um, and for posterity, assuming I actually have shaders configured, but at least there's the built-in shaders, that looks like this. Yeah, here they are. And when you see this, that's how you know the shaders are working. Um, and these would be indeed shaders from that package. So if you got that, you're good to go. Let's get ready to run that, but not run it just yet. Um, so run open MW. Uh, interesting. Okay, yeah. I, I actually never tried something like that. But, yeah, that's a case, obviously, you would have to handle, you know, let people know what's going on. The thing is disabled. Um, yeah, that's definitely a good thing to have. In game. Press F2 to open the shaders configuration menu. Um, and I'm just going to Yeah, it is. It is. So generally speaking, it is disabled by default. Um, generally speaking, in the engine, I think they try to go with generally speaking settings that are more like Morrowind, you know, and Morrowind obviously doesn't have post-processing by default, so it is off. Um, so, you know, that begs the question indeed, should I tell people to make sure shaders are enabled? I think, yeah, I think that is the, I think that is what I want to do. Um, I'm not sure, let's see here. Processing. Here we go. Um, yeah, I think we should do that. I think we should do that. So I'm going to put this off screen so I can see it while I type.
Hmm. Gonna go ahead and do a fancy sublist here. It's not fancy, it's just a sublist. So this is something like a mod editing helper could do like give you like a what you see is what you get kind of an editor and you wouldn't have to sit here and like <laughs> do this. Navigate to the advanced visuals post processing section. Sure that enable post processing is checked. All right, I think it's time to see what this looks like. Oh, I think there might have been something wrong with this order too. Hmm. We're gonna need to check that at some point. Not that, not right now. We gotta stay focused. Uh, close that. There we go. Until I actually remember to open eShell. All right, let's go back to the notes here. Whoa. Don't try this at home, kids. All right. Usage notes, better. Yeah, so I... I suppose... This is more or less done, but we're going to want a change log entry, probably. Um, yeah, I'll do it. Can't hurt until I have like a million database entries for it. And <laughs> yeah, all right, good, good. Usually by the time it gets here, it means we're wrapping it up. So let's go to my tab here, wherever it was. Oh no, I had it in a different window. All right. Mm -hmm. No, we don't have a change log yet. This gets crunched automatically from the database. I didn't actually update the time on it though. We will do that. All right. I think it's worth saying. It just looks a little naked right here, right? I think I should say how how to use these um, to kind of give this like a heading. And I kind of wish too that there was a little more padding here. That's going to be something we'll have to tackle eventually. CSS fun. So okay, yeah, let's go ahead and put that in there. And I'm going to go ahead and do this. All right. And so hopefully I can do my in editor terminal. Uh, e shell is a feature of Emacs. I use sometimes, but not a lot. Probably should use it more, honestly. Okay. to use these. Hmm. Need a quick sip. Very good. <clears throat> <laughs> All right. We tried. We'll use the regular terminal. I probably did something to path in my Emacs configuration. Not important. So anyway, we will uh, go ahead and shrink this back down. We will, in a moment, see our edits, hopefully fully fleshed out. Um, no, where are you at? Here you are. We'll see our edits fully fleshed out here. And, oh, you know what? Yeah, okay, never mind. There we go. Download. Great. Yeah, so hopefully uh, folks in the future can have a better time getting this set up. And have sweet, sweet God rays and everything else. 
Um, I could never really get the Wet World stuff to work too well, but I'm chalking that up to probably an AMD Mesa Linux thing. Don't know. Be interesting to see if it works out. Good. We still, huh? That reminds me. Change logs reminds me. We still have to put the data on there. How to use these. Enable post processing. Run the launcher. Navigate there. Enable. That's checked. Ensure that's checked. Click there to download. Boom. Extract this to a folder we're using in a data path. There you go. Um, I think that's good. So let's go ahead and put that change log data and the updated times in there. Date updated today, which is for me the 7th. And it is currently 11.51 a.m. Great. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and steal this one because I'm too lazy to write out an F string. Uh, updated with more detailed usage notes. Just to kind of call out attention to that, I think, is helpful. Um, but, 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 but. This is on one, two, three, four, five mod lists. <clears throat> so we need to make sure that's represented. Excuse me. Graphics overhaul. Uh, one, one day. Star wind. I. No? Not on iHeart Vanilla? Okay. I definitely use them in my local iHeart Vanilla. Hmm. Something worth considering. Really? Hold up. Yeah, wow, it's... Hmm, I guess it's debatable whether to include shaders in I Heart Vanilla, right? I Heart Vanilla means I want, like, as Todd intended in all of its glory. Uh, we'll revisit that decision. Gonzo... Never played Starwind. Is it worth? Well, so I remember first seeing Starwind in the OpenMW Discord. Um, go ahead and for posterity, we'll pull up my Starwind mod list here, which I encourage you to look. Long story short, yes. But to explain a little bit more, um, I remember when it first came out and it just, it seemed like, wow, you know, somebody really loves doing this. They really want to see this happen. And there's a lot of passion in it, um, and I saw it develop over the years. And um, so the final release is 3.1. Iggy and, and Billy are effectively done doing it, but they're gonna they're still working with the community, helping modders, and encouraging all that stuff. It's great. Um, and I first played it in the 2.x version, the last 2.x version, um, which was like you know it was it was <laughs> rough around the edges, janky even. But, like, you just got this distinct feeling when you played it, like, wow, whoever made this, this is a labor of love, passion, and love went into this. They love Star Wars. They love Morrowind. They love Morrowind enough to, like, use the CS enough to make this, you know, total conversion. Um, it was, I was impressed. Um, and I played, like, maybe an hour or so of that version, and um, that's when I was linked up with Iggy and Billy to do voice acting for the mod which I mentioned yesterday, I voiced two characters in Starwind and another character in a Starwind uh, expansion called The Dark Apprentice. And um, and it was a pleasure to work with them and be, you know, in their story. The writing was really cool. Iggy is an author. Um, Billy also has great writing in some of his mods. Um, and, and yeah, just the 3.x release is just a complete overhaul of many aspects of the game. I mean, Starwind is on the Morrowind engine. It's on OpenMW, but it's like fully, almost fully voice acted, um, you know, and like not even talking about my own work, which you can be the judge of um, if you can find me in there. Um, the voice acting, though, that's not me is just like, wow, you know, I'm playing it and I'm thinking, oh, boy, these folks are really good, you know. Um, so just props to all the voice actors in Starwind, um, my colleagues. And, yeah, it's just... I absolutely want to do a dedicated stream, you know, about Starwind sometime. And um, it's like on my Steam Deck queue myself. Um, I just got to get my local stuff updated. A lot of these mods, Sabres Plus probably, 
um, have updated, you know, so we got to get them in there. But yeah, yeah, whoa, little diversion there, but thank you for asking, Gonzo. It's Starwind's excellent, great community. Join the Discord. Um, there's a lot happening now with regard to, you know, Iggy has kind of announced he's done with the project, but like modders are trying to fix bugs, and there's like this heroic effort to, um, <laughs> like, make updating the big ESM less brittle because you know how that maybe you don't know how the editor is but it's very sometimes changes things that you don't want changing and you might add bugs that you don't know are added and uh it can be it can be a nightmare right like you just you try to fix something and then you realize you broke four other things and you just don't want to fix things anymore you know so this project is trying to make that bring a little sanity to that and make it easier um and I definitely respect that they're actually using uh g7's tes3 conversion tool um to dump it to json text which is exactly you know uh, over the past couple months observing discussions about this problem i remember thinking to myself like oh yeah it would be really cool to um dump it to text and do a diff it would probably be not cool it would probably be hideous um yeah wow okay so starwind yeah definitely worth it um a lot of my Lua mods definitely work with it too you know and and shaders go pretty well with it i think you need a dev build for like uh, exterior shaders like the clouds and stuff to work right because they use uh, fake exteriors if you're not familiar Morrowind the engine has a concept of like a real exterior and a fake exterior the real exterior would be like say Deneen and Balmora and the big map where all the things live <clears throat> and a fake exterior would be like Mornhold from Tribunal right like that's not actually out somewhere on the map it's just a thing that looks like it's outside but the developers did a thing to make it not actually be outside and welcome to game development okay um anyhow going so going back here we got this change just reviewing the diff yeah uh yeah looks looks good so let's let's actually look at it And let's get plan on the next step. Yeah, so I think I don't. So this is definitely what we're going to look at next. LDM. Um, I don't intend to fully resolve the question or the issue right here in the stream. But I do want to kind of have a demonstration of like, you know, what is the what's the process like to check a mod for what it does? How do you figure something out? You know, like if you're adding a plugin, like how the heck do you know what it does? And one way you could know is you can go into the editor, the vanilla CS or open MWCS. Um, I don't know as much about the vanilla CS. I try to avoid it. It's got some, pro I use Linux and it's got some problems with wine. Um, open MWCS on the other hand, incomplete as it may be. Um, oh good, we're ready, yay. Um, incomplete as it may be will actually show you um, what things are changed. The downside to that is you have to go in there and kind of look at every object and sort by changed. And, um, you know, geez, if Atahualpa were here, he could probably tell me, no, there's a better way. Uh, Atahualpa is the CS, one of the CS gurus, Lamut Atahualpa, praise them. Um, is there a good CS alternative? Greatness7 is working on one, I think. And I think he's making a mod uh, manager, which I'm like excited, extremely excited about both. Um, and I would be happy to use and support them. Um, but I don't know. I took, you know, took a small vacation from the, from the community, and I don't know at the moment. I really need to – let's put that in. That's a very – that's an excellent thing. We need to – good CS alternative. That needs to be examined, absolutely. And if we don't do it today, it's going to be on the next stream or in the future. Um, you know, I respect OpenMWCS as a project, as a piece of software, and I respect the love that's gone into it by Nelson, by Lamut, uh, Tuwelpa, you know, all these people that have, like, done a ton of work. But I want to point to, if you're not familiar with Godot Engine, it's a free software game engine. I've made a demo uh using Godot Engine. I, I know nothing about game dev, and I'm a novice coder, but I did it. If you look at my About Me page, you can see a Dimension Warrior link on there, and that's a Godot Engine game, Dragon Warrior clone, that I tried to make. Um, I didn't get too far before I got just, you know, distracted by other things. Um, Godot is slick, and so if you don't know, the Godot editor, when you fire it up, is actually written in Godot using their UI toolkit which is like, you know, the ultimate proof that your stuff works. You know, uh, at my last job, we made a software deployment tool and the deployment tool could deploy itself. 
that's how you know it works. You know, it's a good, it's just a nice thing in software. If you can do that, you know, do it. And yeah, impressive. Exactly. And I wish, I wish, 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 and this might just, I don't mean to be disrespectful to the developers and users of OpenMWCS, but I just wish, you know, we could have like a UI API in OpenMW Lua that is powerful enough to build the CS with, you know. I think Greatness 7 has made a couple tools with MWSE Lua that are like in-game editors. He can like dump, a, like select something with a cube and dump the scene, you know. I mean, just amazing. He could dump it as a NIF, if I recall. Just amazing, impressive stuff. And so I would really like to see that. Um, yeah, whoa. <laughs> um, really cool stuff. And so, yeah, I think G7's working on one. Um, I got to, you know, we will find out. We'll look into it. And I'm certainly excited about his you know, his mod manager. I wouldn't probably use it too much myself. I would use it to know about it, but really anything to end the hideous reign of Mod Organizer 2. All right, well, that's updated. Uh, and no offense if anybody likes Mod Organizer 2. No offense. If it works for you, that's really, really great. Hey, it looks, I mean, it looks good. I'm happy. Check that off. Look at that, 25%. I don't know about you guys, but I find this to be pretty satisfying. <laughs> Just like I'll zoom in here so we can see. But yeah, this my uh, so this is called org mode. It's my note taking system that I use. It's built into my editor, and um, yeah, it gives you this little. I can check these things, and it gives me a little satisfying completion percentage, which is just is great. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so let's commit that though. All right, and uh, so we're gonna put, just put a. Uh, oh yeah, you noticed that. <laughs> Gonzo says he liked the marquee effect. So, um, if I may just demonstrate after I do this commit message. Come on, come on. Military usage notes. So my text editor, as I mentioned, is Emacs, which if you don't know, is a piece of software that is over 50 years old. Um, it's old, from before desktops were really a thing. And so it has something built into it. It has, honestly, it has Tetris built into it. Um, it's just, you know, I won't, uh, we won't go too off the deep end there. Um, but it's one of the things that has built into it is something called zone mode. Um, and yeah, it does some kind of like, it'll just trip out the whole buffer. And, uh, uh so it's neat. I thought it would be neat to kind of have day got through her with like the trippy text and yeah, here it goes. Oh no. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and then last but not least, while we're geeking out on Emacs, uh, it's been a little cold here in my region. And so it's nice to have a little fireplace in the text editor okay okay that's enough back to business um so okay yeah what were we doing here now <laughs> what were we doing here when we got off we got off track uh i think i was running the test let's go back to the terminal no no i wasn't let's get that crunching hold up why is this happening every time this copy should not happen every time Hmm. All right, well, another problem to look at another day. Ideally, so what that's doing is it's copying the code into the Docker. Well, maybe it should. Actually, never mind. I, as I said it out loud in a, the rubber duck debugging tradition, I realized that I was wrong, and what it's doing is right. Past me, I already told the computer to do the right thing. Nothing is wrong. All right. So I'm actually a couple versions behind for Delta Plugin, as it turns out. So I guess... Before I do something, let's go ahead and update that. Oop. There we go. Delta plugin. Oh me, am I okay? I'll just dump those in my old. I keep the old versions around, even though it's open source. You can cargo build it. You know, just keep them around. Coding, you know it, my friend. <laughs> never, never the end ever. Uh, and as I said yesterday, there's like a virtually infinite backlog for this website. Great problem to have, right? It's a 21-year-old game with a community that's updating at such a pace that like uh, not a week goes by really that I have, you know, I don't have to, you know, update something. I mean, you know, mad props to everybody in the community. It's just great. It's my favorite game for a reason. 
Okay, let's let's get it together here. Uh, so we're getting. What are we doing? We're getting the latest Delta plugin. Okay, so let's open that up. Once upon a time, there's actually still an open issue for it. I checked the other day. I suggested to Benjamin to have a better download page for Delta plugin. You know, I am a programmer, but I mean, I hate, I just, I'll say it. I hate this page. Like if you are not a programmer, let's just go ahead and give you the full GitLab experience too with this obnoxious toolbar here. Like, how do you know what to get really, you know? And it's just, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Maybe in a future stream, I will just make the website and, and open a PR and then Benjamin won't, you know, it will be harder to say no then. Um, and I should rejoin. I was on their matrix channel, the, port mod matrix channel long ago but matrix really annoys me so i got out of there uh running away screaming so anyway let's uh, download this though now download the windows just in case i need to test that and uh i actually do own a mac it's uh the machine for my last job that i was fired from and i got they were gracious enough to let me buy that from them and i did uh and it was a you know good use price so I'm not being sarcastic thank you to them uh, but I'm not gonna I don't use I don't ever use it I don't really you know I don't really go for Apple no offense to people that do of course all right and so Delta plugin is one of those things that is tough if you're not really used to doing like command line stuff you know there isn't yet like a graphical front end for it um and so like if you don't run command line things you know it's like oh my god what do i do here um and i get a lot of questions about it i myself um have made this shell script that i use that just is a very small wrapper around you know running the the delta plugin binary excuse me Ooh, double excuse me. And yeah, as you can see here, it just, um, erase, you know, it pretty simple. Got to, we, we, we name a file, we erase the, the output file, we make some changes. You don't want to merge these kinds of files. You know, I don't actually use this or OMWLLF anymore. I don't actually use them anymore, but I just leave that there kind of like as a reminder, you know, you don't. You don't want to merge that stuff. We do the merge, and I call Delta plugin with a couple of um, arguments here. Verbose, dash dash ver verbose, you know, uh, increases the output, gives me a giant wall of text. Open MW CFG. Benjamin added this one for me. I requested it, and it, that tells Delta plugin to open this file instead of the, you know, the default one. Merge is the thing we're doing. And then this final thing here is the plugin it should create with the merge job. Um, and so if you're not familiar with Unix, this here, greater than sign, is uh, output redirection. And I am outputting the output, the text that I previously said was verbose, to a, a log file, which I can then review later on. And uh, this is just handling all the, all their output. Um, this is Unix ma bash, specifically shell magic for redirecting other things. Um, and then when we're done, unfix the things I fixed here, you know, if I still have them, which the merged, you know, obviously this is the, you know, the interesting situation here. You have a merged plugin configured, right? Let's go back to my minimal. No, I don't have it here. Sheesh. You go back, you go to your config and you have a merge plugin here but wait a minute you go to merge and you got your merge plugin there you don't want to merge the merge plugin that would be terrible so that's what i'm doing here i'm like putting the putting the comment in front of it running delta plugin removing the comment moving on um and uh you know ideally there would be something a button you could click that would do this you know um because that's, that's honestly really tedious, and I would not blame anybody for hating that process. But it is what it is. So uh, let's go ahead and turn into my game, uh, games, open MW. All right. And let's 
yeah, let's run this merge plugins. Um, yeah, so and it can I can tell it just do one specific list. Going back to the code here, um, or if I so if I give the script an arg, it will do the arg, or try to. And if I don't give it an arg, it just does them all. So for just for posterity, I'm going to do just I heart vanilla since it's a smaller list. Oh. All right, what you know? That's great. We had a bona fide failure right on camera. So let's see what happened. Okay, good. We see this happening. And this is this is actually I'm no stranger to Delta plugin failures. And this is honest to goodness the exact workflow. What? <laughs> oh my! Oh. Okay, this is the exact workflow though I use every time it breaks for me. So this is, yeah, this is an unexpected development. I see. Okay, no problemo. So this is why I, I use the wrapper script. Um, and the reason why I didn't see the error and it just failed and made my arrows red was because of this guy. I'm basically, I'm, I'm throwing it into the toilet and flushing it without looking at it. So let's go ahead and change this here. And let's try it again. Ah, but wait. Uh -huh, uh -huh, yeah, and so this is what happens if I repeatedly run the script. It's not that smart. And so it will throw just multiple comments in there and we'll go ahead and nuke that. Um, and yeah, uh, I guess since we're looking at it right now, this is my... Uh, my personal, I have a, my configurations, my files, my settings and stuff in a Git repository, all these shell scripts. Um, and yeah, so that's what you're looking at right here. Um, yeah, okay, let's, let's run that. Duh. Let's see, we got another comment here to throw away. Oh, well, there you have it, kids. Um, hmm, I really, I don't know what to make of that, but that's definitely something Benjamin should know about. And so, at this point, you know, we're just gonna we're gonna use a uh, we're gonna use an old version because it's no good. So. Gonna toss those in there with the old ones. Let's go ahead and no, 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 no. Wait, that's too old. Hmm. Okay. Okay, no. Now we just need to do it. All right. And so it's happening now. We got our log here, which is growing in size. You can see down here. Hey, here's our file. Lovely. Okay. And just taking a look at this. This is the kind of output we get from Delta Plugin. And you get a lot of things like... um warnings on some of the bigger mod lists and uh i think it's it's easy for non-technical users to confuse a warning with an outright error but a warning for posterity doesn't always necessarily mean that uh, something is broken there's just something that unexpected that happened you know and um so in something like this it could be like there's a a record that it's trying to remove that is already removed probably by patch for purists or patch for purists is trying to remove it or something something like that so that's what it means but then so what you do after you run delta plugin is you uh you know for posterity you should look at this and see kind of what is going on um and it's not really the greatest example so let's do let's do a bigger one oh no 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 what are you you know what I should do. We got Emacs right here in front of us. It's crunching. Nothing yet so far. 
output buffer must not be standard out buffer must not be flushing. That's cool. We can wait. But what you're going to get in here is a lot of stuff, a lot of warnings. Okay. Expanded vanilla is effectively the same as total overhaul in terms of like content changes and additions. It's just missing like, you know, high res textures, mat normal maps, replacers, things like that. But if, you know, uh, the vast majority of content changes are in here. And so you'll see a good, um, amount of things that you would also see in like a total overhaul setup but it's absolutely destroying my processor right now which is good that's what we want just checking on that cool while we're waiting let's bring the notes back up and I remember oops I remember what we were doing oh yeah so I kind of got off on the deep end about Delta plugin, um, and I had I had just had to update it and see what happens. So I suppose later today I'll reach out to Benjamin. Um, I'll try it again, and I'll I might suggest that removing the dash dash CFG option was maybe not necessary, but hey, it's a this thing. Yeah, I feel like this is not, I'm probably the only person that uses this, <laughs> so he. Just never knew. Um, all right, but well, we got our yeah. Here we go. So, so this is um, so many lines that my editor can't actually. You can see down here the question marks. There's so many lines here that my editor actually is having a hard time crunching it. We don't know. <laughs> and yeah, so just a lot of. There's just a lot going on here, and it can be pretty hard to parse. But. It's probably a good idea, you know, to scan through this and just kind of see. The warnings are not the most interesting thing, though. Um, you know, when we're talking about, like, mods like LDM that should or should not affect some kind of a dialogue record, we want to know, was there some delta patch that happened that, like, changed the behavior in a way that we're not expecting? So that's one possible thing here. Um, so, oh my god, that looks worse. This looks less worse. So you can see here, we got this line highlighted. Scrib, blah, blah, blah. We have these plugins that provide the record. Or this one that provides it. These two that modify it bringing the changes together like that. Hopefully, you know, everything that's intended. Now, obviously, if mod A and mod B make the exact same changes, Delta plugin does not magically just make them both work. The last one that loads will win. And this is where, you know, if you're in a situation like that and you got a spicy compatibility issue where you would possibly make a compatibility plugin. Two things change the record. You could change it in a way that's like neutral to both of them more, or, you know, maybe the situation doesn't warrant that kind of attention. It all really depends. Um, so, yeah. Uh, mo so, moving on from this, let's now go to the intended thing that we wanted to do here, which is let's look at that um, LDM. Find mods. I mean, because mm, I don't exactly remember. All right, cool. All right. And so all you have to do And you get this. So, so, what happened? If we have a plugin that is just strictly record changes, no scripts, um, you'll get a YAML file, .yaml file, in this folder, and it will have all the records that are added. Um, this mod obviously has scripts, and in that case, you get this plugin name .d folder. And in here you get said YAML file. And you get a scripts folder. And so we got 
two scripts on here. So right now, just knowing nothing else about the mod, I'm thinking that it probably doesn't make the change that was expected because I would think something like that would be script related, but I'm also like not a dialogue expert for the Morrowind engine by any means. Uh, I made the Marksman's Eye mod, which is uh, uses OpenMW Lua to create like a zoom effect by raising the field of view. And I created a quest and bound that effect to an item. Um, and, and so I got like a little bit of a taste of like doing journal updates, quest stages and stuff. Um, on that note, actually though, going back to Gonzo's prior question, is there CS alternatives? We have CS.js by Evil Eye, which is what I use to make Marksman's Eye, actually. Won't make the change that's expected. Okay. Uh, hmm. Dean Edry, 23. Please remind me what the context was. On my mind is fl flowing here with the stream, and I forgot what I was talking about. Um. Yeah, cs.js, though. This has a familiar UI to the vanilla CS, but it's strictly just the dialogue stuff. Um, main caveat is you have to use Greatness 7's TES3 conversion. And um, you need to dump uh, the Morrowind game data to JSON. So, like, that's a little extra work. You got to use the command line tool. Uh, hold on, like, oh yeah okay why that's yeah that's a great question so won't make the change that's expected what do I mean by that so what I mean by that is uh, somebody on discord had reported or they didn't report they just kind of asked here they mentioned um, the username I think was like yeah R R R R R R R. thank you oh no this is currently stream. oh Atawapa may have been watching the stream. And yeah, I noticed here I'm streaming a rerun. Oops, sorry about that, folks. I don't know what I'm doing still, kind of, and I think I might have checked something in Twitch. Um, this is obviously it's not a rerun. I don't even know what that means. Why do they allow that? Uh, but I just happened to notice on Discord that Atuelpa me mentioned, uh, messaged me, and it made me... Atuelpa is my OpenMW project bestie. He's just my bestie, and, and I love him. Um, and I'm very happy to work with him on the release videos and stuff and, and all of that when, when we do those things. Um, but so going back to that, um, they had a comment that they, they thought maybe does this, does this mod do that? Does this mod, he says, I'm having, they say I'm having Imperials and high elves in Imperial forts call me outlander only on the first time. And I swore LDM prevented that. And honestly, we don't know. So the whole point of dumping it to uh, text would be to kind of examine the guts of the mod. What is it? What is it doing? Okay. And so based on like the very limited, you know, amount of knowledge I have about what this mod does, which is basically nothing, except for now I know that there's two scripts here. Um, if I'm thinking about, okay, well, does it do, does it do what we, you know, does it do this actually? I'm trying to think, yeah, I'm trying to think, well, in order to do that, there might be like some other script that would do that. But so anyway, let's just, now let's take a look here. Oops. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, and so this is like the, you know, formatted data that Delta plugin gives you. And it's basically useless to look at it as a human, I'm mostly. What you can do here is under this records key, we can see all the changes the mod makes. Okay, and we can see NPC records are changed, you know, just scrolling down quickly. We got leveled items, container records, cell records, dialogue changes. And if I just skip to the bottom, we got 14,435 lines worth of changes. Um, let's try and see here. Um, maybe I can key in on the double colon. Somewhat unscientific guess, 118 changed records. And we can kind of scroll up here and look through these things. I don't know if it's a hard rule. They all have the double colon, but just keying in on that to have a general idea. So there's quite a lot of changes here. A lot of dialogue changes. And if we just kind of quickly look at some of these names here, some of these look like 
you know, the kind of Roman names they give imperial people. Bacola, Closius, Caius Cosades, my man, my shirtless friend. Some, though, not quite a lot. Nels Lendo, he's definitely not imperial. Royal Guard, not imperial. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Inconclusive, but I would say almost. I'm tempted to say that it just doesn't do that. Um, more research is needed. But in general, this is my this is my workflow for kind of like peeking under the hood of a mod, right? Like, oh, somebody asks some question about something I know nothing about. How do we find anything out about it? Um, and in the world of Morrowind mods, tools like Delta Plugin kind of allow you to if your workflow is like mine and looking at plain text is better for you versus looking at it in like a, a editor, you know, it allows you to kind of get results like this. You know, like I don't know how you would really look at something like this in the editor, in any editor. I don't know really like how could you get a summary of changes if you were to use Delta plugin to recompile it. Uh, no, no. I mean, that's a, that's a really great question. Let's do that for funsies. So you should know one thing though. Delta plugin is extremely opinionated for OpenMW. And I believe it closely follows the plugin output format that the OpenMW engine produces and wants, that the CS produces and wants. And it doesn't prefer to match everything as Morrowind.exe wants. Um, and you will see that in Greatness 7's TES3 conf tool. Actually, it's interesting because there's some something about some of the opinionated changes that OpenMW has for plugins that is just different from Morrowind.exe, and it actually broke quest progress for my Marksman's mod, uh, or my Marksman's I mod when I was doing the quest for that, and I had to use TS3 conversion. I think Benjamin actually since fixed that problem with Delta Plugin, but yeah, anyway, so so how does it look? Um, so you call Delta Plugin convert. No, you go in the directory. It's been a minute since I did this, forgive me. Delta plug and convert, and you point it to the YAML file. I don't even know if I needed a CD in here, actually. Um, call it on the YAML file. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. So, what happened here is uh, my OpenMW config that lives in my, you know, just the default place. Doesn't have patch for peers installed. So what we're gonna do, uh, install, expanded. I have I have many ways to install and configure OpenMW. I got Python scripts, I got bash scripts. What do you need? Okay, let's try this again. So I just installed a configuration. It says, caused by file not found patch for peers. Cause whatever I had there, I don't know, probably minimal performance, didn't have that on. And that's a dependency for LDM, evidently. And so when you do the conversion, right there, it writes, and again, this goes back to what I said about it being opinionated for OpenMW, it writes an OMW add-on file. And so at a low level, I'm not sure what the, if I were to say, you know, Oh, I don't actually have this installed yet. On I got a new laptop back in December, and I don't have G7's tool installed yet. But if I were to say, use G7's tool to dump it to JSON, convert it back to an ESP, like what are the differences at a binary level? Are they binary the same? I doubt it. These are all things that we need to know, and someday we may find out. So anyway, um. I'm going to I'm going to check that off with the kind of disclaimer of we didn't solve it exactly and I will follow up with the user on Discord. But I'm like pretty sure reasonably sure that it might not even do that um at all. Now is there a mod that does that? I don't know. Um I will I'll have to ask some people. I'll ask Poodle Sandwich. Um I like bugging him. <laughs> Recently pretty busy with met updates um so okay um yeah so we got uh what time is it now wow okay we only got a half hour left that went by fast hope you guys are having fun i am um so i apologize if i mispronounce this but uh rosinant 
is the author of Alchemical Hustle Mod. And I'll go ahead and pull that up here. And I'm actually a big fan of the game Witcher 3. If you haven't played Witcher 3, aside from major combat differences, it's like one of the most beautiful open world role-playing games ever been made. I mean, it's buggy as all get out as a game that big could be. Um, but yeah, it's just beautiful, fun. Um, I hated it at first because I stunk at the combat, but you know, then I got good and next thing you know, I'm like loving it, you know? So yeah, definitely. Um, so anyway, uh, Rosinet has made this mod for OpenMW, which taking yet another kind of step back, there are there have been quite a few mods for MWSE Lua that affect potions, consumption of potions. Um, yeah, Witcher 3, do it. <laughs> um, although I haven't tried the new remake of it, my graphics card probably will blow up or melt. And and the old version basically runs fine, you know, so I just kind of, eh, and it's a bunch of disk space. Anyway, um, MWSC people have had some really cool, you know, alchemy and, and potion consumption mods. I think Null Cascade has a consumption mod that is like one of the, the definitive ones. And OpenMW doesn't really, hasn't, until this one, had anything. Um, and so this mod actually takes it a step further. And the reason why I mentioned Witcher 3 is because we have this toxicity mechanic. And so in Witcher... You can take potions to buff yourself, restore your health, but you have like a, you know, you have a gauge for toxicity. And it's when you're drinking potions, which are toxic, how much are you poisoning yourself? And in Witcher 3, it's cool. Geralt's like face will turn all like Sith Lord looking as he gets poisoned. Um, and eventually if you get like, you know, depending on where your stats are, you know, um, you could damage yourself or die from too much toxicity. And so here you can see drinking more than one potion at once results in a toxicity that affects your health. You have to wait some time before drinking another potion to avoid it. The toxic effect is cumulative, like in Witcher, meaning that every other potion you drink without the cooldown will inflict more damage. So, if you're watching this and you haven't played Morrowind, I think most of us are probably aware of this feature of the game design, but it's really easy to abuse potions. I mean, just go to the Grayslands. Spend about a half hour picking ingredients, and not only do you have health potions to last you for the rest of the game, you can probably sell them and get rich. Health potions, potions to last you the end of the game because you're in a fight. Why just pull up the menu, pause the game, drop a bunch of potions on your character, and you're all good. Um, so what this mod tries to do, hopes to do, is it tries to kind of balance that out by making their more of a cost to using potions. Right now, if you don't hotkey your potion, the only cost really is like stopping the game and opening the menu, you know? And maybe like it's an effect over so many so many points over so many seconds, so like you could theoretically get hit hard enough and, uh, and the potion isn't going to save you. Maybe. But I really liked the approach of this mod um, to try and extend the mechanics, add the toxicity, because the toxicity is great in Witcher. I... Loved it, you know, it, um, and especially when I started allocating like more character growth to that kind of stuff, you know, it was cool um, to be able to use that and balance it, you know. Um, and so there are other tweaks that come with this. Uh, making self-made potions weaker, great. Decreased duration, great, great. All these things that may or may not actually be appealing to some players, you know. But if you're like me, you've played Morrowind countless times. And really anything to add more spice to the game is pretty welcome, you know. And this is, a, it seems like a very well thought out, well made mod. And I have done some playing with it. I haven't done a full playthrough almost in a year. Wow, it's a crime. Um, but the next one will have this for sure. And so I have to actually open my email here. Excuse me for a moment. But Rosinant reached out to me via email and shared with me a link about a new mod that they have apparently published. So let's take a look at that mod. All right, excuse me. Okay. For the right 
price. Oh, yeah. Okay. I remember reading about this while I was having coffee and getting really excited. So this is exciting. Maybe you've been following the website long enough and you might remember using price rebalance. Maybe you noticed it got taken off in the last iteration of the mod lists. <sighs> Going, I feel like a broken record, but if you played Morrowind, you know how easy it is to just get obscenely rich. Um, thanks to the designers for just throwing those Dark Brotherhood assassins at you right away, you know? Not even the most valuable stuff in the game, but like, boom, you're broken right there. You're rich. Um, price rebalance for posterity. I'll pull that up. Was kind of an attempt to like... Tone it down a bit. Um, what do you mean? Not, no results found. Someday on the stream, we're going to look at the search code that I've written that dings the database because there's some weird issues. Um, actually, Project Atlas. These dupe results don't happen on my local database. I've never been able to figure it out. I digress. Um, no. Rebalance. Yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> huh. Price. I'm thinking of the wrong name. I'm not going to waste too much time on this. Oops. But it was a... Maybe that's not even the right... Price. Balance. There we go. Price balance. And nothing against this mod. Uh, very great attempt. Um... To basically tone down like some of the, you know, generous prices you get for some things. Um, and there's uh, the author has taken the time to write a lot about what the mod does, how it works, some of the motivation um, in detail here. I mean, absolutely mad props. I stopped using it because... When you start adding things like Tamriel, Tamriel Rebuilt, that, you know, OAAB data and mods that utilize that whole library of amazing assets by MD and company, um, they don't, you know, they don't know anything about this and these changes that this mod made. And so you have like an awkward, kind of an awkward situation where when you're on the mainland, when you're on, I'm sorry, when you're on Vardenfell, you got your nicely adjusted prices here and everything kind of looks the way you want it to, but then when you go to the mainland, um, it's not the case. Or if you have OAB stuff, you know, which the mod lists all have. I'm all for more. More is better, right? Um, and anyway, the OAB items are fantastic. You know, you want them. So it's, you know, it's um, it's a tough problem to solve. Oh, yeah, actually, no. The rebalance mod I am thinking of was done by my my close friend Ezzy of the community, known for Forested Morrowind, adds a bunch of giant trees everywhere. Um, and that was called, I believe, another armor and weapon rebalance, and that did a it did a similar thing where it not only did it rebalance stance, but also prices of weapons and armor. Um, so I I think I might have used them both at one point, but in any case, it's a hard problem to solve. It has to be content aware, and this is where Lua can come in. It doesn't come in right now. As far as I know, the API doesn't have the sauce kind of that we need for that. Um, go ahead and put this in the notes for posterity here. Um, but So this is where Lua could come in. If we could look at records of objects and weapons and items and things that we're adding, and we could, you know, we could look at things like anything really we could look at any record and we can make arbitrary decisions about how we want to scale things and i mean the fact of the matter is there is no there is not going to be any one size fits all way to adjust pricing scale to make everything work you're going to have to have special cases you're going to have to know about certain content there are certain weirdly priced things that maybe are such you know for a reason um it's going to be a lot of work but excuse me as i punch my microphone Lua could, could, in theory, have the benefit of giving you kind of a general approach that is content agnostic and could work for everything. Um, I haven't looked at the feature set for OpenMW49 lately, um, but last I checked, you could not modify object records 
of uh, items and stuff, and you definitely couldn't create them. Um, so in time, we'll get there, and it's something that um, you know I'm sure I'm not the only one thinking about. But in the meantime, I've been talking about you know how we're going to do this with Lua, and Rosinant has this approach that they have done: uh, economy rebalance based on econ- economy adjuster adjustments prevents getting rich very quickly or getting rich at all by improving NPCs' trade skills and increasing prices of services, all done in an immersive, reasonable way, fully modular, compatible with Tamriel Rebuilt. Sounds pretty good. I won't lie. I'm going to actually put this in the chat for y'all. Check it out. Um, So why this mod? Morrowind's economy is Rogan. I think I kind of ranted to that effect a moment ago. If you have a basic grasp of game mechanics, after a little bit of exploration, it's a real struggle not to become a millionaire fast. So yeah, like I said, sleep once or twice, you're golden. Unless you've already taken pains to stop that feature. A feature which I believe exists in every Bethesda game up until Fallout 4. Which also has the feature. But they have somewhat tastefully integrated some of those DLCs. Anyway. Okay, it's an extension of economy adjuster adjustments. So, let's see. Do we need that? No, we don't. Okay. Let's just take a quick look at this. Necrolesion, a wonderful community member who does a lot of really good work. Props to them. Yeah, okay. Editing old stuff, keeping it going. Cool. Very cool. Um, so, yeah, I mean, goes without saying, I want this. Are we going to add it to the website today? Hmm. No. Because this is a really, yeah, yeah, absolutely foundational mod. This is something, though, that is touches so much potentially that I really want to, you know, try it out before I put it out there. So we looked at this. I'm going to go ahead and check it off from the list. We have an action cam. I wanted to look at this actually beforehand, so I'm going to actually jump ahead of that. Excuse me, jump ahead of this. Um, well, we talked about that a little bit. Um Wow, we're 50% done on my list. That feels pretty good. We got like 15 or so minutes left in the stream. Um, Let's see. I'm tempted to try this. Load Soltha's Combat Pack with Starwind. Um, Let's let's just try to run. Actually, let's try to run Starwind first off. Starwind. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. Nice. It's alive. But what I didn't do was add Sothis Combat. So let's go ahead and uh, just do a little copy pasta here. Just check it up here with the other Lewis stuff. Someday I want to make a Marksman's Eye quest for Starwind. But for now, you can probably just like give yourself the item and it's only slightly awkward. Hmm. Generally speaking, Lewis stuff should really, you know, it's what I load last, and they should really jive with each other pretty easily. Uh, Yesterday I talked a little bit about interfaces. We got that ability there. Righto. All right, I'm going to go ahead and skip this. But you should try out Starwind, and you should watch that. Um, oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. No sound. Forgot. Good old pipeware. If you're a Linux user, you know what I mean. There we go. All right. 
you all know what happens after this. I'm gonna skip it. Snap out of it! Endor Spire is under attack by the Sith. Get your things out of your locker and find a way to open that door! Lots of voice acting. Uh, custom music. You know, um... I'll put my real... Oh no, oh no! Haha, <laughs> okay. Haha, <laughs> so... This is a very fun... So what we have here... Is a bug. For shaders, you can hear some of the cool custom music that Star One comes with. Awesome work. I forget the name of the individual who did that. Good stuff. Let's fix this, though. We want to actually see the game. But uh, as I was saying, this is a bug, unfortunately, with OpenMW that is triggered by the volumetric cloud shaders. Maybe it's fixed already? I haven't, you know, I'm running an app image from a couple of months ago, so I don't know if they fixed this yet. But basically, when you, when you start in the interior, and again, even exteriors and Starwind are interiors. But when you start an interior, you get that nice black screen. So we're going to have to go ahead and... Um, I want the fast approximate anti-aliasing, but whatever. We'll be fine without it. Okay, let's try that again, shall we? Good. There we go. Ooh. That motion blur is a little intense. <laughs> Let's go ahead and switch that off. Just great music. I love the Starwind music. Like, well done. You know, as a musician myself, Writer's Block with music is like just a crazy thing. You know, and so yeah, some of the, these original tunes I think fit really well with the game. And the whole reason we're here. Let's check out. Boom. All right. Script on. Yes. I've actually never tried this. Sothis only told me about it when they started writing it. Uh, yeah, cool. It's on. That's really all I care about. Bow, aim, activate. Oh, okay. So, yeah, this is uh, probably a better approach to doing zoom, honestly, than my mod. Um, but it gives you a bow zoom. Looks like some fatigue drain. That's great. I love it, actually. I'm going to probably replace my mod <laughs> with this. Or at least put it as an alternative. Zoom and aiming in third person. Yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. Very cool. Charged attack parry. I'm assuming these are all defaulting to on. Jump air dash. Lose more health. Mod difficulty and reset stats. Hmm, if the game is too easy. Ooh. Raise them all. Okay, so this is one definitely that I'm going to need to experiment compatibility-wise with my own leveling mod. I say it's my own, but I did not originally write it. A fellow named Grey Wander did, and I just simply ported it to Lua twice. Attack buff. We want. We want. We want. Sit still to buff sneak. Move to debuff it. Okay, cool. That's cool. See, all of these are very... We don't have a combat API in OpenMW yet, but, I mean, here's Sothis just being like, whatever. Here's all this cool gameplay stuff. Staff spell buffs. Cool. Spell buffs if you're using a stat, which, you know, I'm a fan. Swim boost drain. Jump while swimming to boost. Nice. Eventually, I'll probably come through here and, you know, disable all these pop-ups, but for now... Time directional attacks, yeah. Weighty charge attacks, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, very good. And I apologize for the potato quality. Oh yeah, if I was paying attention, would have came over here and grabbed this stuff. Okay. Pick our race. I'm just gonna pick one. <laughs> um, what the force sensitive people where are they not these ones mm. no not them I forget I'm going with these guys let's be Darth Maul this is not what I picked before though oh yes alright gonna be a bounty hunter just for the sake of getting on with it. Down to ween. Good, good. Alright, and so at this point, you can probably 
if you're using my mod list loadout, you're using natural character growth and decay. And at this point, you can open up your inventory. Got this item helpfully named Drink Me after picking your class and sign to begin NCGD MW. I'm not going to take it just yet, though. I'm hurt. I don't think I'm going to make it. We're going to finish. You're going to have to slice that terminal to get the force field down. Yeah, okay. We're going to finish character generation here, which includes slicing this thing. There we go. Righto. That's a me. All right. And now we'll go ahead and. Oh, sorry for the potato quality again. Drink me. Yay. Yeah. Settings menu. I like the defaults myself. Oh, one more thing we need to do here. Until I'm able to, from within my Lua code, detect that Starwind is running, we have to turn this on. Hey, now we got our actually Starwind for friendly force names. Cool. Uh, let's equip our sword. Detected. Microsoft Sam voice. <laughs> All right. And so this output you're seeing, this would be the combat pack in action. Um, so, I mean, I think it's safe to say that this does fit, you know. Um, at least so far. Yeah, it's supposed to remind you of Kotar, right? You got um, Jubo Nassi, or whatever guy's name was, I forget. Um, I'm about to die here. This is piss poor. But it's meant to, we're going to meet up with Basila here in a minute. You know, it's meant definitely meant to um, give you that feel, you know. Oh my god, this is ridiculous. This is disgraceful. Where do I go? So yeah, I think I think it's safe uh, initially to say that they possibly do jive well, pretty well, pretty well together. Because um, vibroblade combat, you know, is a it's a pretty big part of the the game mechanics. If you choose, you know, um, lightsabers probably would also benefit from some of these directional attacks and and other kind of uh, stat buffs that you get from from the combat pack. Woo. So yeah, I think once you, when you start playing this mod, you're probably going to want to leave these like on-screen notifications of your, your moves that you've done. But once you get the hang of it more, you're going to, you know, turn turn the spam off. Um, but it might be a good idea to keep them on. We got Basil up here. How interesting. And a Don't do too much of a spoiler for those who are planning on checking it out on their own. Not gonna go too much further than where we're at now. My action camera swap mod in action. I actually want to stay in first person. You're awake. It's nice to finally meet you. I'm Zelka Forn. I've been taking care of Zelka Forn. If you played the first Kotor, may be a familiar name. A lot has happened since you were unconscious. Just about the entire city has been destroyed. Like I said, the voice acting is just great, like, all around. It's been a few days, I think. I haven't slept since the attack. We had him well, all right. I can't stop you. Play the game. You go, See it for yourself. You me to this day to and here we are in Terrace, though. Um, again, that's where, basically where Kotar starts out. Um, I got my poor man's view distance here. Hang on. It's not that low. Hmm. I don't know actually why I have fog here. But yeah, you can see they've got the implementation of the terrace buildings, which is cool, you know, and it should look pretty... Oh yeah, entire dialogues, my friend. 
in Thai, I would say the majority of the dialogue is acted out. And and again, some of some of these folks are just extremely talented. You know, good work by everybody. But I mean, just obscenely talented. Um, oh, if you played Kotor, you might recognize the Rat Ghoul here. We got ourselves a Rat Ghoul, Sith Troopers. And yeah, just man, I keep coming back to the music. You know, it's cool, pretty cool, pretty cool indeed. I just had a rat cool attack out here. Something. So yeah, Starwind. Uh, I'll probably leave it at this up with Starwind. We can start wrapping up the. We only got a couple minutes left here in the planned duration, but uh, you know, if you've played Morrowind a ton and you're looking for some new content and you like Star Wars. You know, um, yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely, so good, absolutely, uh, Sith aesthetic in KOTOR, just, they nailed it, um, and the writing and everything, in my, it's my opinion, <clears throat> KOTOR 1 and 2 are just the best Star Wars stories, you know, period, really, um, cross that off, okay, so, yeah, um, it's good, check it out, it's definitely worth it, there's, um, a community of modders that are modding Star Wars. Uh, I'm sorry, Star Wind. And what I have here on the website is just a very small slice of it. You know, you jump on their Discord, which I think I have a link to that in here. Star Wind Discord, yeah. You jump in there. Um, you know, we've got these. I don't even know if Endor is needed anymore. I think Billy might have rolled that in. Um, but in any case... These are all good, worth looking at. Pay attention to the usage notes in case some of my stuff is out of date. Um, you'll find me voice acting in this one and the main Star War Starwind uh, content. And yeah, again, it's all voice act. Like the voice acting is all the lines, you know. Um, and I had a lot of fun doing a character that was sort of like Candorous Ordo. If you played Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic or Mandalore in the second one, um, and then another character that I won't spoil. Uh, and my Dark Apprentice character that I also will not spoil. You check it out. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah. Uh, thank you for joining me today. Let's wrap this up. Um, we didn't really look at issue cleanup. I didn't really get anything done with these graveyard mods. I might actually try to take some time off stream to d at least organize what is what. Give us a better ability to really get flowing uh, next week. Um BSA usage notes, again, suggested by Gonzo. Thank you. And uh, glass glow set, graphic herbalism, compatibility. Definitely an important thing to have. You're going to walk into those um, glass mines and be like, what? Doesn't, you know, doesn't harvest the way it should. Um, so we're definitely, this is getting carried over. Um, these certainly will be carried over. Um, if you're, uh, I'm going to put these links in the chat. And yeah, you know, if you, um, I would definitely like to, solicit some feedback from you folks uh you know what do you think about my little descriptions on here that did, did i do okay are they it's hard to oh that looks hideous but there you go it's hard to imagine yourself you know when you have installed mods and played open mw and you know all this stuff <clears throat> it can be hard to imagine yourself if you didn't know any of that stuff and so i definitely tried to um put complete instructions on there but i get the feeling over time that um Maybe I didn't do such a great job with that. So definitely curious. Um, the source of those actually is, do I have any? Yeah. It's just, it's um, Markdown, you know. So if you want to take a look at it, send me a patch or, you know. But I just feel like this is, this could be better, right? It just, let's pull it up in here. It could be, it could be better. Condition. Just like my search could be better. I think I achieved my goal of at least having a pleasant looking website. But yeah, just the way this information is presented. I don't know. I, pro I probably need to rethink about that. And perhaps that's something we'll do next week. Um, but uh, before next week, I intend to actually handle making these notes public. And what I'll do is uh, when I do that, I will share the link to the repository in the discord channel but you can of course also just um you know navigate to get lab yourself and you know keep an eye on what's going on in the modding open mw organization here um because yeah so soon 
um, a new repo is going to pop up here for the, I'll probably call it MLNW stream notes. Um, what I named it up here and yeah. Um, so keep an eye out for that. If you're interested, want to know what my plans for the future episode are going to be. And if you want to suggest stuff, um, you know, hop into the discord, hop onto IRC, shoot me an email and let me know and we can go over it together. Um, so I thank you guys again for joining me. It's a pleasure having you and, um, slowly but surely we're going to get everything kind of, kind of going. So happy modding, have a great week and I will see you later friends.